Ready? Your stuff there, because I think this is a good location for it. Um, I try to set up not too close. Uh, but yeah, an average day for me is uh, I wake up, get out of bed, I drag a comb across my head. Oh, that's the Beatles. Damn it. Um, but essentially, that's it. Like every single person I think in busking is kind of the same. We all wake up. Uh, some people have, are really good at planning, but I'm more just like throw it in the wind, see what happens. She got cars and all that stuff in there. Yep. So uh, a tiny little sign that I made like 10 or 15 years ago that I just really like the magic show. Yeah, he kind of looks sad but happy. He's like, hey, this is all I got. <laughs> That, right? That with the sign. Is that what stopped you? Okay, you ready? Oh, oh, grab those three. Those three. Yeah, grab them. Grab them. I started. Yeah, now, folks, watch as we stretch the room. Kind of like right. hanging out with friends that are performers. Uh, 2016 kind of codified what I was doing, and now 2017 and 18, I feel like I've just. I'm here for a good time, not a long time. Okay, your jaws felt the same as theirs. I grew up in Toronto until uh, I was about eight. Um, Roma family, so very ethnic, uh, not much in the way of English. Uh, so I learned a lot about body language and movement, I guess, when I was a little kid, just from, from watching people. As a kid, gypsy family, it sounds terrible, but my, my parents taught, taught me how to steal. So I'm like a three-year-old, four-year-old walking into a store. Uh, first time I stole a chocolate bar, like a Snickers, my mom reprimanded me. We were in Union Station. But then as we got older, we began stealing for profit. Not, not because we like to make money, but like we were broke. The moment I put the headset on and the little music out, then it creates the ambience that people think of when they think street performing. So it lets them approach easier. And uh, if they can't hear me and they see something really weird, they freak. Audience, audience, take one big step forward. If you do that, watch. Take the X, go like this, go like this. Now, Mo, you have the plane when I have the X, right? No. But if you believe that, the audience would too, and I get one in court case because everybody saw the X, right? Watch them switch. Go like this, Mo. Shake it. Shake it. Shake it. Fist bump. Ouch. How did you do that one? From like political science at Western to street performance doesn't feel like that much of a change because essentially I feel like university teaches you time management, budgeting, uh, and how to just like start and stop on a dime. I felt like even law and politics had a corruption to it, like uh, you're always serving somebody else's kind of need. Whereas magic on the street, people just come up to you and they get joy, they get happiness, and you send them on their way a little bit better off, hopefully, than they started. This same environment on like a Wednesday when nothing's happening is terrible. But on a day that a game's happening, everybody's excited. So you have two options, either when they're going to the game, where they're getting excited, you can keep get them excited, or when they're leaving the game, they want that one last thing. I think I'm a different busker because I, of the university degree. Like uh, some, degree, some buskers have degrees, some don't, but I find it's weird because we all think the same way. We've been able to sort of look at society, take a step back and figure out a new method. Essentially, like, instead of working for somebody else, we're all entrepreneurs. Like, every busker is an entrepreneur. So when I do this, can you see the names? No. No, your eye is drawn to what's dominant. If I shake it... I'm currently in the Ontario Superior Court uh, challenging Toronto's busking bylaw as unconstitutional. Essentially, like that entire block that the mall is on, on Eden Centre, that between 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. you can't perform. You what also- What's your reasoning for that? Uh, they don't have one. So essentially it's just, it was a bylaw that was added and amended in 1996 under the Mike Harris government. Uh, he, they were the government that also brought in the Safe Streets Act, which prevented uh, homeless or panhandlers from asking for change. It was the aggressive panhandling law. 
they also brought in at that same time you couldn't busk using any amplification in anywhere in Toronto. If you're a mime, you're allowed to perform in that location during those restricted times. My concept from if I look at it is that the Safe Streets Act prevented individuals from asking change directly, harassing or asking. Yeah. You couldn't perform during certain times, but you could if you're a mime. So essentially they wanted to silence that entire area. Yeah, it was a form of gentrification. April 14th, I have to have what's called a book of authority, uh, which is all the court case precedent arguments in, uh, in copies of five. So it goes to the Attorney General of Ontario, Canada, uh, the prosecution crown, uh, one for the court and then one for me. After that, the evidence is kind of locked. The court date is June 12th. Uh, at that point, unless there's an adjournment, um, an interim court order or something along those lines that prevents everything from going through, I have a basically two and a half hours to argue my case. If that happens, then the, the law will change uh, pretty much overnight uh, for, on, for Toronto. Buskers will be allowed to use amps again. Uh, buskers would ha won't have time restrictions for our freedom of expression. So it, it's really close. Uh, when it comes to like understanding the legal process, one court case can change a law. So you don't even have, like, I'm sure if I win at this level, uh, the Crown Prosecution will appeal it and take it to the uh, next level of court. Where it, but like, a petition could work, but when you only have, say, a couple hundred buskers in a city, uh, that's the problem. That's that's why minorities have the charter rights and freedoms. Like they, we are such a small group that we, a most don't pay tax, so b politicians have little incentive to, it, like you know, work with us as shareholders. Um, so we have to like use the process. So like, the court case will change the law. You could get a petition, maybe John Tory would care, maybe he wouldn't. I would like to be famous for changing society, which is, I think, might be hard with magic. I've never really thought it through. Like, my, my concept was, if you change laws at the court level, the policy at the provincial and federal level have to change. So that's the way, uh, equal rights came about. It wasn't that the government said, hey, let's make everybody okay. It was that somebody sued the government using the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. That's why, like, for right now, like, I'm, when I come out and busk now, I'm here just to have fun, but the more fun I'm having and the nicer, like, my regular clothing I wear, I'm making more and more money. Like, a couple days ago, somebody tipped me a 20 and then another 20 and then a Blue Jays hoodie that they had just bought. They were like, it was for them. It was really nice. And I was like, wow, I, I, I made you so happy. You just want to literally give me the hoodie off your back. I wanted to go into law and I wanted to work with uh, minority groups, basically change the world using the government and law. I think I'm going into that phase where if I really want to impact change, doing a magic show, talking about political science, sociology, psychology, how people interact and how we're all connected, that changes people. So if people think when I'm reaching my pocket that I'm reaching for something scary and they jump back, that society getting worse. If the, I reach in my pocket and they're excited, like uh, Mr. Dress Up Tickle Trunk, you open it up and who knows what's gonna come out. You want wonder in the world. Steve the Magician on Instagram. Magician Steve on YouTube. Or just Steve. Okay, that made you wanna look through the real life part of life, right? This is what I use to warm crowds up.